Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this relatively recent discovery that somewhere out there, somewhere really far away in another galaxy, there is a black hole, a central black hole, that seems to have experienced what's known as a magnetic flip. In other words, the north and south poles of this black hole might have actually flipped, and this is something we've never seen before. Which naturally makes this a pretty important observation and a pretty important discovery. But let's, I guess, talk a little bit more about this and about the idea behind these central black holes and how is it that they actually have so much magnetic field to begin with. First of all, the obvious question here is where exactly is this charge even coming from? Now, we know that black holes have obviously a lot of mass and they also produce a lot of gravity. And we also know that, at least in theory, black holes can be charged. In other words, naturally, some black holes could be magnetically charged. But we don't believe this to be the case for most black holes detected so far. And at least in most cases, the only two properties that seem to matter are obviously the mass and also the spin of a black hole. But because of this mass and because of the density of the black hole, in general, all black holes will start accumulating really, really large accretion disks. And the more massive the black hole, the bigger the accretion disk. Now, this accretion disk will generally contain a lot of ionized hydrogen and also a lot of other elements that are most likely highly charged. And all of this is also naturally spinning. And anything that's charged and that spins will often produce magnetic fields. And in this case, because it also accelerates its uh, spin very close to the black hole, the actual charge increases quite dramatically. And so extremely close to the event horizon of the black hole, the thing spins so fast and the charge is so strong that it ends up producing these very powerful jets that we see from really far away. Some of them can be hundreds, thousands, or even millions of light years long. So all of these jets are very likely a result of all of this magnetic interaction. With one of the most famous jets being the one from the M87 galaxy you see right here. This one is approximately 5,000 light years in length. And all of this magnetic energy is really the only reason we're able to see certain galaxies or even have concepts like quasars, blazars, and so on. All of these active galaxies all over the universe, and all of these different galactic features visible from very far away distances, for the most part they're all a result of a single phenomenon. They're essentially produced by very powerful astrophysical jets, which are created by very powerful magnetic fields very close to massive black holes. But depending on what angle of observation you have, you will essentially be seeing slightly different things, which is what we usually refer to as a galactic classification. Certain galaxies are blazers, certain galaxies are quasars, certain galaxies are cipher galaxies. But they're all basically the same thing, just from a different angle. And at the source of all of this are these very, very powerful magnetic fields at the center, very, very close to the event horizon. Although, to be honest, last I checked, even today, it's still kind of difficult for the scientists to explain exactly how all of this forms. There's still a little bit of a confusion about how the very powerful magnetic fields end up creating these astrophysical jets and all of the features we observe so close to black holes. But most scientists agree that it's all due to magnetism. And I guess more specifically, it's all due to the interaction between very powerful gravitational fields and very powerful magnetic fields. And it's all due to this plasma, very dense plasma, interacting and circling around. But obviously, we don't believe that the plasma flow, or the spin of this plasma, can suddenly change. It can't just suddenly reverse and start spinning the other way. Yet, the observations from the black hole located in a galaxy relatively far away from us, the galaxy located somewhere right there, known as 1ES 1927 plus 654, seem to suggest so. Or at least they seem to suggest that something happened to this central black hole here that might have caused the north and south pole to reverse and to potentially create something kind of similar to what we usually detect around our own sun every 11 years. We know that our sun doesn't just reverse its rotation when the magnetic fields flip. So something similar probably happens around this black hole as well. But what exactly happens here and how exactly it happened, that's of course another question. And also, did it actually happen? So here's what the scientists observed. They were looking at this particular region and they detected that this galaxy suddenly brightened by a factor of about 100, mostly in the visible light. But also other observatories such as the Swift Observatory captured the glow in the X-rays and the ultraviolet. 
discovering in the process that all of this started somewhere at the end of 2017. All of this was actually discovered by accident and somewhat automatically back in 2018 when this galaxy approximately 239 million years ago had a very unusual and very sudden change. Now at first it was actually believed to be this. It was believed to be some kind of a star passing close to the black hole and most likely being destroyed creating a huge amount of light in the process, what we refer to as a TDE or tidal disruption event. But a recent study suggests otherwise and they do so for a very simple reason. They looked at the observations in the X-rays and also radio light and realized that the X-rays dropped off very very quickly. And the X-rays in this case are usually produced by various charged particles that are spiraling inside a very powerful magnetic field. But because they changed so quickly, it means that the magnetic field also changed as well. Yet the observations in other light revealed that the visible and the ultraviolet light increased, not decreased like the X-rays. Which implied that the accretion disk itself was growing more hot and becoming larger and larger. But the X-rays were dropping in power. And that also implied that the magnetic field was dropping in power. And so that's not really something that the scientists expect from a typical tidal disruption event. Here, the X-rays should be increasing dramatically because of the interaction between the material from the star and the black hole and of course all of the other stuff. And so in this case, the team behind the paper even find any description tried to model this on the premise that, well, what if it's some kind of a reversal? And they showed that if a black hole accretion disk undergoes a reversal, the field will actually weaken and will weaken at the outer edges of the accretion disk first. As always, all of the relevant links and the paper itself are in the description below. And as all of this happened, the disk started to heat up while the magnetic field started to weaken, which is how they explain the lower production of the X-rays. And once the reversal is complete, that's when everything returns to normal, but now the north is where the south was and vice versa. With all of this, as you can see from this image, happening within approximately 10 years. But because this is the first such observation ever, and because at the moment nobody really has any idea of what exactly happened here, this is still a very preliminary study and still a very preliminary observation. Nevertheless, Everything described in the paper and everything the scientists proposed seem to kind of make sense. Naturally though, there's really no explanation for why it happened, or even how it happened. I mean, the observations suggest that it kind of happened, but there's no explanation for the actual mechanism. Although I guess let's kind of be fair here. We know that Earth also has reversals every few thousand years, yet we still don't really understand why or how they happen. We know they do happen based on huge amounts of evidence collected everywhere around the planet, such as the crust that possesses signs of reverse polarity that happens every few thousand years. But even when it comes to our own planet, we don't really understand what geomagnetic reversal is, or to be more exact, how it happens. And we also know that the next one is slightly overdue. As a matter of fact, the last one was approximately 780,000 years ago, and in the past reversals happen approximately every 12,000 years. And so, since we barely understand what happens on our own planet, and we don't really understand how exactly it happens inside our own sun, it sort of is expected that we wouldn't really understand how it happens around other magnetic objects. So, at the moment, all of this is a pretty big mystery. And obviously, we can't even answer the question of how often this happens, or if this is a common occurrence around other black holes. Maybe it's super rare, and maybe it just happened here once. But if the effects here are very similar to our own sun, it's all probably connected to the overall strength of the magnetic field, and when the magnetic field weakens just enough, it has a chance to actually flip north and south. That's what we believe happens around the sun. You can actually see the direct observations from late 90s to early 2000s right here. The purple lines are now on top, even though they were on the bottom before. It doesn't happen right away, but it does take just a few months for all of this to complete. And so this is maybe how all this works around black holes as well. Although since the magnetic fields and magnetic lines around black holes are so much stronger, it would probably take a lot less weakening for the magnetic flip to occur. But I guess now, by observing this particular black hole in this galaxy, we might be able to discover the next flip, assuming of course it happens within our lifetime. And if it does happen within our lifetime, or if we actually find these flips around other magnetic objects, such as for example magnetars, we might be able to explain this once and for all. 
Until then though, or until future discoveries from this particular black hole, that's pretty much all we know. It's a pretty cool observation, it's a really interesting explanation, but it doesn't really give us any answers in regards to the magnetic flips of different stellar objects, different black holes, and of course, our own planet. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.